Looking for a great Twitch channel to subscribe to? Then check out Double Toasted at twitch.com slash double toasted for hilarious reviews and commentary on movies, current events, video games, and so much more. Help the crew get to their goal of 2,500 subscribers by May, and they'll watch Corey Coleman's masterpiece Space Jam. And as a stretch goal, get to 5,000 subscribers for a 12-hour live stream. Subscribe today at twitch.com slash double toasted. Well, it appears dreams do come true for everyone who voted in this week's episode poll wanting me to review the 1979 forgotten melodrama Dreamer. See? A whopping 38%. <laughs> yeah, everyone was dying to see me talk about this movie. Bask in the sentiment of, oh god, it's winning. Although there was a little bit of strategy on display in the voting here. Such as, I ain't voting for a horror movie in January. Having seen The Grudge, Underwater, and The Turning, I agree. Now this person knows how to protest vote. I voted for The Omen, not because I wanted to win, but because I don't want Dreamer to win. So good on him for voting for the movie that was coming in second. But the dream was still alive in the voting city, as the prayers of, Please Dreamer, we believe in you, were answered. But not for the one asking, am I the only one who wants prom night? No, 20% wanted prom night, more than the 11% who wanted The Brood. No one wanted me to watch that, I guess. I would say congratulations to the winners who voted for Dreamer, but we are not winners here. No one wins with the movie Dreamer. We are all losers. If you're expecting me to unearth the magic of Diane Weist blowing herself up, or Karen Allen seduced by a French stalker, well, keep those dreams alive because, oh my god, I hate myself for unearthing this movie. The poster suggests a far better movie, probably because it looks like Dennis and D. Reynolds decided to make an incestuous bowling movie on It's Always Sunny. Why read the tagline when the trailer can just tell you? A man dreams of winning. A woman dreams of loving. A dreamer dreams of both. Dreamer. Rated PG. Haha, <laughs> congratulations, Mom and Dad! It's a dreamer! I'm not far off because Tim Matheson's name in the movie is actually Dreamer. The movie Dreamer is the result of post-Rocky inspirational dreamsploitation knockoffs, right down to actually getting Bill Conti to do the soundtrack for this one, too. It's the story of Dreamer, a dreamer who dreams of bowling. That's it. I just told you the whole damn movie! The film was directed by Noel Nasek, who would later direct one of the Twister knockoffs, Tornado. It was also the only writing credit for co-writer James Proctor, but the other writer, Larry Bischoff, had a hand in Denver The Last Dinosaur, and exploitation fans may recognize his 1972 crazed Vietnam vet hitchhiker stalks hippie girls movie Hot Summer Week, aka Girls on the Road. I'll take my chances with the highway serial killer. Anything is more exciting than Dreamer! The movie opens like I'm watching a prototype of Cheers set in a bowling alley. Where everybody knows your name. Ah, uh, witness the history of getting shit-faced drunk and knocking over things with bowling balls. Yes, here's a group that definitely looks like they want to be lugging around heavy balls. Wait, this is where Pablo Cruz's reach for the top comes from? Haha, <laughs> I don't know what that is. But let's remember the first brave man who realized you could just walk up to the pins and kick them over. What, no shots of the kids in the arcade playing the Terminator 2 pinball machine? Guess we're in the movie now. He's been stuck in there for weeks. <laughs> I can tell this is gonna be really exciting. I could be watching The Brood! What a thrilling looking bowling alley. I'm yearning for someone to get their dick stuck in a bowling ball like in screwballs. In case you didn't know this was the 50s. Okay, when is Pennywise gonna show up as a talking bowling pin and stick his head in a ball shiner? Eh, might as well try out this bowling thing. Wow, that was a magic ball. He jumped ahead 20 years and now he's Tim Matheson. 
Witness the thrills of skin peeling ointment applying action. Wait, did Dreamer win? Is the movie over? The theme song even starts playing. All of my life, I have waited for the day. Okay, I joke, but this genuinely feels like we should be cutting to the ending credits. This is like if Rocky 1 opened with the end of Rocky 2. The theme is still playing. This song did not reach the top. The film takes place in Alton, Illinois, and having been born and raised 90 minutes away in Springfield, I can vouch for the fact that Alton pretty much looks the same today. Everyone wants a piece of that dreamer. I reckon I can have that there potato. You go on television, that there potato, you wear something. Or you could ask him for an autograph. That'd be worth a lot more than that potato that you have no proof that he once owned. This was years before Alton actually had people living in it. Something about not wanting to live in a town where they used severed heads to sell cars. You never know who's going to be sleeping in them. Dreamer, I told you, till you can get the money, you can't have the car. I will never get used to the fact that his name is Dreamer. Dreamer goes to show his mentor Harry, played by the great Jack Warden, his new trophy. Hey! <laughs> Harry, are you okay? Why didn't you answer the door? I did answer the door. Don't you see me standing here? You were rubbing your dick with a cheese grater again. We both know this. Now all that's left is for Dreamer to win the big championship in Chicago. You can't bowl in Chicago until I let you to PBA. Well, I gotta let me in after winning this one. You said so yourself. Oh, sorry, Harry. I'm more interested in this milk carton than I am in this conversation. Dreamer still works at the Bullhaven. He gets all the free bush beer at 10 in the morning that he wants. As you can see, their lives are just pointless unless Dreamer wins the tournament. They're on their third breakfast ribeye of the day. Said he got him a car. <laughs> what kind? Why don't you get some new batteries for that oh. thing? They cost too damn much. These two feel like the embodiment of the old guy eh, joke I always make. <laughs> What'd he say? Says he likes Alton. No one's ever said that. I think he's frustrated Pennywise still hasn't shown up yet. So here's hoping maybe ghostly greaser Robert Rustler will shake things up. Makes sense. Tim Matheson was actually in that one. Oh, and he's got a girlfriend, Karen Lee, played by Susan Blakely. She knows a thing or two about dreamers. She saw Lincoln Hawk achieve his arm wrestling dream and over the top. Maybe you would get more work done if you didn't always have that trophy on your chest. He hates having her around. The time I took you, I bowled 146 and finished out of the money right in the hole. That's right. Oh, we had fun, remember? Oh, you had fun. I didn't like losing. What I'm trying to tell you is that you're worse luck than bowling under a ladder after smashing a mirror with an open umbrella. Guess we'll just build our own scary clowns, damn it. It's for the kids. Yeah, well, the kids like them, all right? Helps them get rid of the hostility they feel towards their parents for dumping them in that closet you call a playroom. It was important back then that we got our frustrations of shitty parenting out by punching a clown. Oh, have you seen Dreamer's trophy? He totally won a trophy. <laughs> well, that trophy's going up his ass. Sorry, Harry. I've cleaned this 20 times and it still stinks. And that was that scene! The next scene doesn't contribute much either. Hmm, that's definitely some time filler, much like actual bowling. Sure, we could be spending time with Dreamer and his girlfriend's grandmother. But never mind that, more montages that cut to nobody. This just keeps on going. What do you mean this movie's only 80 minutes if you take out the credits? Richard Schull actually looks surprised when something happens. There appears to be a pin jam. Good thing there's the maintenance workers named one and two. I'm not joking. One, no amigo, this is two, I get one. 
This movie names its characters like a drunk guy trying to recall his prom date. That's when uh, freaking Titsy McGee dumped me. The workers are played by Speedy Zapata and Pedro Gonzalez. Well, that sets me up for one hell of a spare for a joke. Must be why they're trying to figure out a way to blame this on Sylvester the Cat. And there's our hero, asleep. Why bother waking him up? Nothing's happened so far. There's something about this movie that makes me surprised it took this long for a giant van to turn up. And have they just given up on bowling? Ten ball. Oh, hey, that's a bad shot guy. Man, no way you gonna slip out of that, eh? If I wanted to watch someone shoot pool, I'd watch The Hustler. In fact, I wish I was watching The Hustler. Too bad I'm stuck with Dreamer. Am I in another movie now? You wanna get nasty going over there and pump beer? It's five or nothing. Okay, okay, five. I don't know who either of you are! Dreamer and Harry are looking around for a bowling alley to buy for themselves so they can make their own bowling movie, I guess. I'll win the title and we'll buy the sucker. Do it, Harry. You just dream about something that's all it's ever gonna be. Just a dream. I suppose we should see our dream through, Dreamer. Thank you for making my dream come true by dreaming my dream of dreaming. You know what song I love? Dream a Little Dream of Me by Mama Cass. Not to be confused with the Corey's movie, Dream a Little Dream, and its sequel, Dream a Little Dream 2. This movie manages to make training montages seem lame. We you're trying to throw the ball too straight. It's not your game. Circle the ball. Keep that wrist firm. Follow through with the boy. Oh my god, I dream for more thrilling scenes like Dreamer taking a nap. This goes on so long, and every piece of advice is just as riveting as the last. Oh right, his girlfriend. Well, I'm glad you won the tournament. No, you're not. I'm sort of glad. I'm sort of watching this movie. She's worried he's gonna be a big star and forget all about her, right? He's gonna win that bowling championship, and then he'll be knee-deep in babes and blow. The biggest set piece of the movie so far is him leaping out of bed and pretending to be asleep on the couch so her grandmother doesn't catch them in bed together on her houseboat. Sadly, though, he's been rejected by the Pro Bowlers Association, and they also rejected him to be the newest member of the Osmonds. How can this be? What, do you think of something special? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, his name is Dreamer. So he's off to challenge this non-membership in the mean streets of St. Louis. I remember time when things didn't look so bright. Beautiful overcast weather. Now let's watch them clean Bush Stadium for 12 hours. Nobody here. Thank God, the rapture. This place is as empty as Alton. Do other people exist in this universe? But we unfortunately find out his real name. What do I? No, I'm, I'm Harold Nuttingham. I'm here to talk to the board. Harold Nuttingham? Nuttingham? Okay, I now know why you're called Dreamer. That sounds like a porn parody of a Stephen King name. Go get him, Dreamer. Nuttingham, you can't just barge in here like that. You watch me. By the way, we're in St. Louis. Just in case you can't remember we're in St. Louis, I assure you we're in St. Louis. He's gonna rub his winds right in their face. What are you averaging now? 221. For how long? Over a year. I won that Springfield tournament. I don't remember that. But alas, they voted him into the association, and all he had to do was just order them 12 Emo's pizzas. Everyone in the bowling alley is in a good mood because of this. I think it's about time you and the old spider got together, don't you think? Especially Reap Van Winkle. He's always in a good mood. This is Spider who says smooth lines, usually involving a web. Ha ha ha! Kidnap vibes. Okay, Romeo, leave the lady alone. I'm telling you, Captain, I think you're a little sore since I waxed your tugboat over here at the pool table. I'm sorry, did you two bang? I don't know what I'd rather talk about more. One and two passing notes to customers via bowling balls, or Dreamer and Karen placing an order at the bar. Six buds, an old tailor, double tequila, old granddad neat, and an OJ. This is the lamest goddamn movie I've ever watched for this show. Spider is just dying to be put on the sex offender registry. Does he even bowl? Clearly, this is her fault. You know there's some slut in there shooting pool with Spider? 
If he beats her, she says she'll lay him. Thus, another night of Spider going home alone and humping an ant farm. Karen actually wants to be included in their trip to Peoria. <laughs> what a bitch. This is why I don't want you to come with me before I bowl, because you always wait until right before something important to start a fight. Oh, right, I planned that. Chicks, bro. Just leave me and my old man friend alone with our balls, please. I'm halfway into this movie. Is it too soon to mark it down as a turkey? <laughs> Now that we're back, I feel like I should fill you in on what you missed. And what you missed is chicks, bro! Women, I mean, sometimes they don't understand anything. Well, I for one don't understand why there's a giant hostess cupcake on the wall. Behold my new invention, dreamer. I've shrunken the earth. This is way more important than Karen. Use this as your new ball. Karen is so pissed off at Dreamer, she wants to kick him out of her grandma's houseboat. Karen, leave. Grandma, I don't want to talk about it, please. Just go back to bed. Yeah, I bet this fight is going to be bloodier than the bowling alley climax in Alien 2 on Earth. Or uh, maybe it will be, because of course Spider just randomly barges in. That's what the Spider was born for, to help a lady in distress. Damn it, just get it out of here, Delbert. And stop sexually assaulting me! This guy seems to be a holdover from the writer's hippie serial killer movie. Dreamer really stepped in it this time with his shitty priorities. But I'm not gonna compete with Bowling and Harry! Who do you think you are, anyway? Treating me like I'm second? I'm not second to anybody or anything! Honey, please, you're third next to Bowling and Harry. Harry will always be number one. Not only does he leave, but he takes the vacuum cleaners and the rapist with him. And it's asking him to move his car that makes things escalate quickly. All right. Perfectly reasonable reaction to that. Good news, Harry. We can finally be the lovers we were destined to be. He's either off to Peoria for that tournament, or the movie's turned into a 70s car commercial. Famous Super Bowl ad ever! Oh no, perhaps you shouldn't have crashed it into that other car. Come to think of it, that was really stupid of you. This feels like if you slightly pan over, I'm gonna see Bat Pussy hopping along the highway. He's hitchhiking to the tournament, so I'll just let the narration speak, because God forbid actually showing the truck driver. Mayday, Mayday, this is the Black Old Kid. Got a gutter baller fogging it to Chi Town, looking for a relay at Whip Lips Eat 'em Up. Can't wait for the exciting conclusion of Hokey and the Bandit. Witness the amazing going from one semi truck to the other action. I sure hope he makes it in time. Last call, Harold Dreamer Nottingham. Right here. Right here. I will never get used to that being his real name. You'd better get your ball checked and weighed. <laughs> My ears do perk up a little because I hear a familiar location. I've never heard of that person! Sure, this tournament is one thing, but I wonder what's going on at the Bull Haven. Nothing. Nothing is going on at the Bull Haven! And when the hell is Bill Murray's hair gonna get all crazy? Maybe I would rather be at the Bull Haven. At least we get some passion here. Look, you're the one to throw him out, remember? So don't talk to me about love. He can be great, really great. So just let him alone. He's mine. You stay away from him. He lives with me now. Sure, sure, we could be at the big game, but endless shots of Harry bowling alone? Sign me up for this competition. I'm assuming he's bowling well. It never actually cuts to the pins. Notice how the music picks up when we go back to the tournament. <laughs> And then it dies down when we leave the tournament! No wonder why Harry is trying to bowl himself to death. By the way, I'm being serious. Oh. He is bowling himself to death, and his heart just split. 
Just stay with Harry. We don't need to cut to things like Dreamer winning the tournament, largely because this scene was already spoiled for us in the trailer. Must be why no one is acting surprised. Hey, hey, I won! Isn't this a beaut? Look at this! Hey, I won! <laughs> no one cares anymore, Dreamer! Where's Harry? He's in the hospital. Oh, and Harry's heart is in the gutter. We did what we could for Harry. We even replaced his heart with a dirty rag used to clean out the finger holes. There's just enough time to say goodbye to Harry. Hey Harry, I'd like to see the manager stick this one up his ass. Well, they're at a cemetery now, so I guess that means Harry is dead. And now Karen makes Dreamer feel bad for not also going to see Saul while he was in the hospital. Because fuck Saul and double fuck Harry! Take down all his pictures! We want no memories of Harry here! Throw these old headshots in the fire too while you're at it. But it's when he gets Harry's magic dream ball that Dreamer realizes he should go bowling. Boy, Dreamer sure looks great today, doesn't he? Sure does. And what a sweet ass. Oh, thanks for taking me back. Sorry for the whole car thing. Now we're off to the Grand Championship. Guess that's not what this was. He's got to make a quick stop to the Alton Parade, though, to ruin that shit. I'm just glad Spider settled down. He's down to only four assaults a week. Now the Jesus is the biggest petter assed in the alley. I know the music here is telling me that I should be thrilled. <laughs> I still don't see Bill Murray in his crazy bowling hair. Ah, good. The running commentary should pick things up. He's trying to bring a new dimension to the sport, and I think he probably will. They'll remember his style, and they'll remember that white satin shirt. No, they won't. This movie needs to grow up. It looks like a good stroke. Hardly. After 100 porno spoofs, I know a good stroke when I see it. This movie has so little faith in its climax that it has to cut to a random scene with the cops. The, ball, the car the registered in his name is blocking a navigable waterway. Chris, you want him? Today, so there he is. Has... That's Dreamer. He's on TV. That was necessary. Ooh, nail biting action. The anxiety of the situation has caused him some big trouble, but he can still make this. Oh yeah, I'm having such anxiety right now. I haven't been this anxious since I woke up to get a drink of water and then went back to bed. This is like watching home movies of someone's bowling league or the B-roll footage on a local news program about new shoes at the bowling alley. This doesn't even look like it should be the movie. It looks like it should be the auditions for the movie. Don't worry, they try to add stakes. That ten pins off its spot. Could I have a re-rack? Let me check. And Dreamer really looks upset. That'll make the shot more difficult. Oh my god, that's crazy. Welp, this will make the strike hard. If you're wondering if he wins... Oh, right! He does. And I still feel like I lost. Now go celebrate by having sex on a plane, please, I beg of you. This soundtrack can be yours if you need a last minute gift idea for your uncle that you see twice a year. They then dedicate the bowling alley in Harry's memory, but they spent all the extra money to add the ending credits to the sign as well. <laughs> so that means it's over. <laughs> oh my god! Not only was this movie lame, it's not even the lame plot from the description. Professional bowler tries to win a tournament against a grizzled veteran bowler? That's not what happens at all. Oh, he goes up against this non-character a couple of times, but then at the end he just competes against real professional bowler Dick Weber. Stop making up shit! Although I kind of understand why they would make that up. How do you sell this movie, which doesn't even have a villain? And it has side characters, which either just show up out of nowhere, or in some cases, leave out of nowhere. This is like watching Kingpin, if it were directed by a veteran of Campbell's soup commercials, and Woody Harrelson never had his hand severed. It's like if an episode of Ed was made by the people who made the movie Ed. 
Go figure, this movie didn't do very well, and pretty much disappeared from everyone's mind as soon as it arrived. Siskel and Ebert hated it, with Siskel saying it was too lame even for his bottom ten list. Janet Maslin probably put it best when she said, I'm not sure if I've ever seen a movie that was supposed to tell a story and managed to be as uneventful as Dreamer. Good lord, does the next sacrificial pole melodrama have a lot of lameness to live up to. I'm looking right at you, soup for one. If it weren't enough that I'm eating soup alone, how did I end up on this bed in the middle of the water? Huh. Talk about sleepwalking! My life is crazy! Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go kick a bowling ball because at least when it shatters my foot, I'll actually feel something! Hey, lame baby! How you doing?